Hello, bonjour, comment ça va? This week there's been a lot of news in the VR and AR industry. Let's go! Welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of VR. That's right, today a lot to talk about, including new VR headsets, mixed reality and AR, and also some gameplay on the Oculus and the Oculus Quest. First up with Disney News and the research team who have developed a really cool hardware and software where they can basically blend real world objects with the world in virtual reality. So basically the person in the real world can throw something to the person and there'll be a tracker inside of the virtual reality headset that shows where this object is actually going to be positioned. You can even take off the actual real object in the tracker and just put a little target where it will see where it's going to drop. Now I see a lot of applications for this. Another really cool, exciting news is the launch of Atari-themed hotels. That's right, Atari, the synonymous global brand in video games who launched the Atari 2600 back in the 70s and the 80s and since have launched whew, amazing titles that we're all familiar with and who are also in the very famous themed movie Ready Player One are coming out with their own branded hotels where they're going to offer a lot of different VR and augmented reality experiences. They really want to become the hub for esports as well as they're going to have a lot of different conference rooms and event rooms where they can accommodate these kind of things as well as build a retro room for those, you know, a bit more nostalgic who want to play some retro Atari arcade games. So these will be started to launch from for this year and hopefully be opening up within the next two years. So they will launch in eight different cities in the US, starting with Phoenix, and then they'll move on to San Jose, Seattle, and other various parts of America like Las Vegas. It would be really great to see these kind of initiatives and also an Atari theme hotel, why not, in Europe or here in Singapore. That'd be really awesome. Now let's talk about some gameplay in VR. First, starting off with the Valve Index, which have reportedly sold more than 149,000 headsets, making them number three, and most of them are sold out. Now, in March, the big anticipation of the release of Half-Life Alyx, which is supposed to be the game of the year of 2020. Valve have decided to make all the previous series available for free. So if you own an Oculus Quest with the Oculus Link or a PC VR, Headset, you can actually try it all the previous series free of charge until March itself. Arizona Sunshine has recently patched up a new update for Oculus Quest users with a new world called Arizona Sunshine on the Quest has had a lot of different mixed reviews because it is one of the most expensive titles. So far, a lot of people have said that it hasn't really provided the immersion that, you know, at that level of gameplay should, especially comparing it to The Walking Dead uh, Saints and Sinners, uh, which is available on PC VR and will be available on the Quest in Q3. Apparently is a much better title, much more thought out, worked out kind of title compared to Arizona Sunshine. But what do you think? Leave a comment below if you've tried both and, you know, let us know your thoughts on those two titles and how they fare against one another. Another VR experience that was released recently on the Oculus Quest store is Odika. Odika, which has been available for a number of years on various other different VR headsets using the Steam store, looks really like a lot of fun. You get to shoot things because you have a lot of things that come towards you and you have to shoot them and you're within this kind of futuristic environment with a lot of color. Of course, there's a lot of music, so it could also be quite beneficial for fitness too do hit the like and subscribe button with the notification bell icon because I will be doing a review quite soon of this title and you'll be notified when it's uploaded. Some development with Facebook and Oculus, especially regarding to mixed reality. In last week's report, we spoke about how we didn't really know when the next generation of AR, VR mixed together headsets would come out. Well, the Stinger, which is a quarterly or by yearly kind of gazette, they kind of release industry news since 1994, have said that Facebook are working on an AR device that they're looking to bring sooner than later, as well as developing their own platform and not just be dependent on Android as it is 
today. So that will take some time though. However, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook did also come out very recently to say that he expects AR to be out within 2023. So does that mean that we're going to have an Oculus Go 2 maybe a little before with some of the AR implementations as an experiment? Or are we going to see AR implemented a lot more than it is currently on the Oculus Quest in 2023, which would coincide also with the launch of the anticipated Apple uh, AR devices. Now, Road to VR and The Verge and various other news outlets have reported recently that the China National Intellectual Property Administration have approved around mid-January a new patent for Samsung's future VR headsets. Now, we don't really have a lot of information as to what they're doing, what they're going to be used for, what technical aspects or specifications they're going to have. So what we have at the moment are a few photos of the actual patent itself with some 3D models, but that's all we have. However, there's a brand new other headset that came out quite recently by a Chinese manufacturer. They're called DPVR and they have released the P1 Pro 4K. Now they're going to be taking on the Oculus Quest head on, that's right because their headset is also wireless and offers 4K, which is more than the Go and the Oculus Quest. And the chip they're using is the same. It's a Qualcomm Snapdragon XR1, and they're directly hooked up to Vive Ford, so you can pre-download more than 3,000 titles. Can you imagine? Vive Ford, if you're not familiar with them, it's a bit like Netflix or Amazon Prime, where you pay a monthly subscription and you get to enjoy all the games in the library. let's talk about accessories for a minute. Cup VR, which is KUP VR, have released some new hardware where you can basically use any mobile device as a VR experience. Now, it's not going to give you, of course, you know, the kind of experience you're having in an Oculus Go or in a Pico headset, and of course, definitely not an Oculus Quest, but it's going to give you that entry level, which is much more entertaining and immersive than, for example, Google Cardboard. You have two remotes and also a special headset where you can slide in your mobile phone. And I definitely think this is a great way to get more people into VR. I really do see event organizers using this kind of gear because it's not like the old school stuff that really makes you go, oh no, why are they using this? It actually looks like something that could be quite fun, especially for those who are still a bit anxious about getting into VR or who need a little more education. So you can actually click on their inquiry form to find out the price and also get a trial. So go and check it out. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're a developer, a manufacturer, or you're just someone in the VR or AR industry, and you want my help to promote what you guys are doing, leave a comment below. I'd be very happy to explore it. Remember to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification so that you get notified when I upload more news. And of course, so that we can grow the community and help as many people in VR. Yeah, and also AR, because that is what it's all about. All right, guys, until next time, take it easy. As always, DJ Q Music.